Okay, everybody, welcome today to a really fascinating topic within the Glam Hive universe. Um, we're going to be talking about shape, um, and I believe we're, we're called Shape Matters specifically. And it's really a complicated subject because we're talking on the one hand about loving ourselves, accepting ourselves as we become. And then I think we're also going to be talking about how we enhance our shape. You know, I think a lot of us are looking for figure flattery improvements, and that's okay, too. So we, we don't have to look at this through one lens. Um, my name is Brooke Jaffe. I'm going to be hosting this talk today. I'm thrilled to be joined by this group of panelists that work in different facets of the fashion industry. So I'm going to just quickly run through and introduce, and you can just... Uh, I'm not sure how this appears to the viewer. Raise your hand or, or smile when I when I say your name. Um, so first, we've got Tiffany Gifford, um, celebrity wardrobe stylist, and based in Nashville. And it's great to see you again, Tiffany. You. Um, Andrea Racy, uh, founder of loungewear sleepwear brand extraordinaire, Helena Quinn. So we're going to talk a little bit about how sheep, how sleepwear can even make you feel great about yourself. And Chelly uh, Carlson, also a stylist. You have some expertise in the fit world in terms of shapewear, so we're gonna talk about that. Sonia Young, also a fantastic stylist. Get your perspective on shape. And Christian Nielsen, creative oh. uh, director at brand Hervé Leger, who a brand women know and love, and also a designer for your own brand. So as you can see, we've got the dream team here, and we're going to dive right in. So let's talk about, you know, every woman, I don't know any woman out there who just thinks how they were born is perfect. We all love things about ourselves. We all dislike things about ourselves. Are there any kind of universal principles when thinking about getting dressed or, you know, and looking our best that we should take into account? Like, where do you begin when just thinking, I want to look my best? I think, oh, go. You go, Sonia. <laughs> right. You go, you raise your hand. Kelly, Kelly, you get started and then I'm going to pass it to Sonia. The number one thing I think about is balance. We are ultimately creating the hourglass figure for every human, every female. We're trying to create balance. And so doing that, we're gonna balance her bust, her top half with her bottom half based on her body. So ultimately we're gonna create an illusion that she is more balanced than she may not be. So ultimately that's the one word that comes to my mind when working with clients, starting with their breasts. And then so before, before, we, before we go over to Sonia, Let's talk about Chelly because you have a lot of expertise in terms of bra fitting. I come from Bloomingdale's where there used to be like a bra fit program. Yeah. So I know a lot about what that means. Can we talk about some of the things women can actually do to create yeah. that balance? And you can have a dramatic change and shift in the way you look and feel in your clothes with the right bra and where you position the breast tissue. Um, just back to what you started with before, we all are born a certain way. I found with most women I meet, um, the grass is always greener on the other side. If they have small breasts, they want larger breasts. <laughs> if they have larger breasts, they want smaller breasts. So yeah. my job as a stylist is to ultimately, again, balance their body. So if they yeah. are fuller, I can ultimately, with the right bra, minimize them. Without making them look wider and lower, we will minimize. And if they are smaller, we're going to create a little more balance by making them look a little fuller without making them look padded to then also balance their body. So it's really using the right fit and the right bra to enhance their entire look. All right. So words of wisdom, we all need a bra that fits. And I think that might just be something that we overlook as, you know, women, we tend to be very overprogrammed, a little too busy to deal. And we sometimes forget those underpinnings really contribute to the total picture. Okay. Sonia, got to hear from you. I think um, kind of having a uniform and going into your closet with a plan, I think is kind of best. And if that's like, wearing your favorite jeans and a t-shirt and just having different like variations of that, it makes like getting dressed so much less stressful. Cause I mean, 
even personally, like me coming in my closet today and putting on real clothes, I just, <laughs> I didn't even know where to start and I dress people for a living. So, you know, it can be really confusing for people. So I think kind of having a uniform and just having some like just a method that works for you. If it's a t-shirt and jeans or, you know, a jacket, like I think that's definitely helpful. So that's really interesting because I think women, like we all, we live in this kind of Instagram culture where you're kind of expected to be in a new look all the time. So yeah. I love that a celebrity stylist like you is basically saying that it's okay to repeat something that's working for you and just to iterate on that. I guess the real question is, how do you figure out if you're really bad at this and you don't have your eye, how do you figure out what that uniform is? Like, do you, do you look for friends to tell, like, how do you know you look good in something? I think it's kind of trial and error. I think it's a lot of trying things on and pushing yourself and boundaries and seeing what makes you feel comfortable because it's like, you know, instantly when you put something on either you're like, I feel great. Like, okay, sure. I'll do this. Or you're like, okay, maybe if I tweak it here and here, or you just don't feel good in it. And I think it's just kind of using your own judgment or going with your best friend or whoever might be your soundboard in a safe place to try stuff, I think is always a good place to start to kind of figure out what your uniform is. And it could be as simple as a t-shirt and then adding jackets. You know, you shouldn't buy something unless you think you can style it five different ways. That even applies to say sequin skirts, you know, you can wear that casual, you can wear it with a pair of sneakers and a t-shirt, you can wear it with a blouse and a heel. And I think that that's kind of, you know, I think versatility in a, in pieces in your closet is again, helpful as well. And going to your best friends and people you trust. I have um, a quick thought also on this, Brooke, I think just shifting a little bit towards like a psychological perspective. I think that like, you know, we tend to wake up every morning and feel like we should be feeling one way about our bodies every morning, like it's supposed to be the same every day. And that's sort of a control factor that I think women like to have. But the reality is that we are so, I mean, just intrinsically are so different every day from a hormonal perspective and your body shifts from day to day. And so I think like loosening up a little bit of the control over, you know, it has to, it has to be one way or else you can't go out into the world and feel good about yourself. And it's sort of speaking, to what Shelly and, and Sonia are saying, once you, you know, like, you know that and you know then what can work for each day, depending on how you're feeling and being okay with that, like accepting that and, and loving those shifts from day to day, I think is also just a big thing in terms of embracing shape from a day to day basis. I love it. And I love Sonia's point so much about investing in things that can be styled for multiple uses. Um, also, I just think that's realistic. I think this expectation that we're always in a new outfit is also like an added layer of stress. And I think Instagram propels that. Christian, I want to talk to you because in, in, when we think about investing in clothes, fabric is so important. And when I think of Hervé Leger, I think of that bandage fabric. And I think about like what I think there's a lot of misnomers about if you're a certain size, you shouldn't wear a body con, or if you're, sometimes if you're really underweight or thin, wearing bohemian styles could swallow you whole. I think that, can you talk a little bit about fit and fabric and enlighten us? So, um, the thing with the classic Avalishia dresses, which we call the bandage dresses or the icons, they're woven in a, a viscose really, really tight. So basically you have lots of these really thin yarns that are like woven really, really tight. What they do is they, or how I see them work very much is to start with, you need to know that your body is gonna show cause that's what the dress does. But it takes out the like unevenness a lot of the time. So it sort of holds you in. So if you have like that little extra here, whatever, it'll just sort of flatten it a little bit. That's sort of uh, what the, uh, the material very much does. Then we have done certain dresses where I put actually less stretch in the waist and on at the beginning of the thighs, which kind of, if there's a lot of stretch, you can sort of, um, it gives more. So if you have less stretch under the butt, it actually lifts it up a little bit. And if you have less stretch on the waist, it'll suck it in. And that'll really give you that um, female, um, 
beautiful silhouette. Yeah, the bandage dress is kind of like a dress every woman can aspire to because it, it really is like a piece of art and it really can make you feel your most feminine. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts from the group just about, you know, I mean, it's this, the only, you know, this is like a complex stew because it's, we're talking about investing in fabrics that alter your shape and kind of make you look a certain way. And then we're also having, I just want to like reorient, having this conversation about like just accepting yourself and that it's okay to not mm -hmm. always look a certain way. So I'm just making a statement. Yes, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> I personally am obsessed with Hervé. I remember a couple, like years ago, I got, when you guys were doing bathing suits mm -hmm. and I call it like my safe bathing suit. Like I <laughs> didn't swim in it, but it was like the perfect lounging swimwear because it was like, it held me in and like, I, that's how I feel kind of in, I have a ton of Hervé pieces. Like I'm just personally such yeah. a fan, like the pants, the way that like they hug you, but then they also have that right fall. Cause you know, when you're watching celebrities walk on the carpet and the pants like sway and there's something like with the weight of it, it's so nice and you feel so <laughs> held. Like it literally like, Hervé, it's like a warm hug to me. And I think that it makes everyone feel really confident. And I think, you know, I've worked with size zeros and I've worked with size 16s and I can say across the board, it is one of the most figure flattering looks for anyone, no matter what shape, size, or what you think your problem area is, is I think it really accentuates what you love about your body and it makes you feel so feminine so personally huge fan love it <laughs> thank you and i think you're putting you're putting that idea of feeling held and supported in a positive light which it oh, yeah. is meant to be which is like maybe even with shapewear i don't know if as stylists you guys have some go-to kind of in like shapewear pieces that you kind of re refer your custom your clients to over and over again because i think there's nothing wrong with investing in shapewear that makes you feel supported as well are, are there any sort Absolutely. of like tips about that that one yeah shelly so with every um starting with the bra i feel like that's the most transformative piece so starting with the bra nailing that and then the next shape piece that i usually go with is the slim cognito from spanx and mm -hmm. it, you secure it right underneath the bra so it will not slip so you kind of tuck it under, you put it on first and put the bra over it, it will not roll. And then you get basically shaping and smoothing, no matter if you're size zero or size 25, it's a great piece for every size and it's comfortable, um, it's a great piece. I, I love like it. I, I feel like I'm taking notes here. <laughs> I know. Well, so actually, Andrea, I want to pass the baton to you. You are the founder of a sleepwear company. You make beautiful, gorgeous, luxurious sleepwear items. You know, the French have always done something that I admire. They always wear beautiful undergarments and underpinnings, which I think like it's like their little secret, They how much they like themselves. <laughs> Talk to us about how sleeping in something beautiful, I mean, do you think that that contributes to like sort of an overall sense of self-worth? Yeah, I mean, I think whenever you are selecting an item for yourself that isn't necessarily gonna be seen by anybody else, um, it's a form of self-care, it's a form of wellness. I mean, you are, you are saying that when nobody else is around, um, or maybe your husband or a significant other, or that is, it's just as significant for me to feel good and feel beautiful for myself and nobody else. And I think that's a, you know, it's a really powerful um, self-care tool. Uh, I think it, it just, you know, we sort of seen that a little bit with the pandemic. We, you, you, I, I've been in sweats for a while. Um, and I think the second <laughs> shift and you, you know, you, you put something on for yourself that elevates you it elevates the mindset that really does have a very i think powerful impact um mentally and and it's it's that's that's why i love what i do i think like if you know some of the best feedback that i get from women and from customers um are women who just had babies or you know are maybe going through chemotherapy or something and they're they put on a, a piece and it made them feel beautiful and i think just that the the ability to um support mentally through clothing is is one of my the reasons i love to do this i love it i definitely need new sleepwear okay. 
But also, can I just add something, even though it's not really my department? I Please think do. People, for, people forget the importance of, sleep, of uh, sleeping and how important it is to sleep well. I personally sleep in like lovely t-shirts. I don't sleep <laughs> in some like old uh, horrible t-shirt. I love to sleep in a great <laughs> t-shirt. I love to change my sheet. I mean, we all know when you have fresh sheets on the bed, you sleep so uh, much better. Yeah. That first night, I love to put on, I mean, I don't have sleepwear as such because I just put on a t-shirt, but I think it's super important and it also starts your day great. Yeah. You know, waking up and sort of like, okay, well, the first part is done now. So I think, um, got to make a little menswear line maybe for us. Uh, you know what? I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm away. Stay Come tuned. On. <laughs> I think I think though Christian you're tapping into something greater which is you know this conversation is twofold and a lot of body confidence and just accepting ourselves is taking care of ourselves and like mm -hmm. making ourselves putting ourselves in a headspace where we can like be po we can try to be positive. Yeah. Um are there any other hacks or tips because especially stylists um, Tiffany, we haven't heard from you as much. Um, just like any yeah. thoughts around, you know, dealing with your clients and just like, because I'm sure even celebrities or musicians have bad days where even if they're, you know, a rock star, they might need somebody to have, make them feel great about themselves. I don't know. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I can definitely attest to the wrong shapewear can ruin a fitting. Um, I had this beautiful dress that was custom made for an award show one time, and we just did not have the right shapewear on hand. And it made it really tough to, to finalize that look. Um, wow. And we, in fact, couldn't finalize it that day. So it's really important to think of those things. Um, and, and I think that uh, my go-tos are probably Spanx. Right now, I'm also really uh, loving this brand called Squeam, which it um, has some really great waist censures. I have clients Ooh. that um, aren't necessarily looking for smoothing, but they want to accentuate curves, um, which I think is such a beautiful thing in general. Um, and their waist censures are really great. Question then. If I'm just on it, well, when we can go back to stores, theoretically, and I'm going to Bloomingdale's, Saks, wherever, should I, as a woman, should I be putting shapewear in my bag and bringing it on my shopping day, on, like on a Saturday? Would that make my shopping experience better? Oh my God, yes. I think so. Because I don't think, <laughs> yeah. it's like people only talk about doing things like that for a wedding fitting. Like you never hear people bringing you know, unless we're talking to a stylist, you guys are prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but just for somebody, so yes is the consensus. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's a good takeaway. I think building out a kit personally that like you shop with is also like so smart. Meaning like if it's nipple pasties, if it's, <laughs> you yeah. know, going out and showing people your outfits, I think having, building out like, a longer spank, a higher waisted one, a waist cincher. I think that like you kind of can't go wrong because there's nothing more daunting than being like, okay, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on this dress. I don't really know how it's going to look, but spanks will probably make it look better, you know? And if it doesn't, then you have to go return the dress and it's a whole thing. Totally. And I also think it's important. I feel like oftentimes if women aren't shopping for shape shapewear a lot, they assume that, that, that this shorts version is all there is and there's so there's a plethora of options when it comes to shapewear oh, um you know because i think oftentimes people will be like well i can't wear this because i only have this particular there's only this particular type of yeah or there's a high slit i can't wear totally yeah. that's I interesting so yeah. is that what that what kim kardashian that skims is that what that's all based on is sort of like alternative shapes I'm not as familiar or maybe, yeah. a, maybe a random question, but like sort of different undergarment shapes. Skin tones, her, dif she differentiates with multi skin tones. Like oh, that's great. More beautiful skin tones that match more tones. More skin tones. That's yes. But I think it's also just good to have that foundation ready. I mean, I used to do, um, Actually, I went to Reese Witherspoon's house once to dress her for the Oscars. Mm -hmm. 
And before she put on the dress that I brought, she was like, she had this beautiful space, obviously, for getting dressed in. <laughs> she opened the drawers and she was like, I mean, I think she was Spanx or whatever. And there was like different, even skin tones according to her tan, I guess. But also, I mean, I, mean, I didn't ask that details, but also I could see a lot of the things guessing that they were different sizes according to where she was at in her like, you know, period in life. I mean, she's had babies and everything. So like, I think just having all that ready is great. And she was like, which one should I put on? And I was like, well, where are you at in your life right now? <laughs> and uh, we ended up, she just put on like a beautiful little um, uh, short and uh, with waist. And then that sort of, we built the dress on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's like a security blanket. Totally. No matter what size or shape you have, that shapewear feels good. It's like you're, you're all tucked in. Um, Christian, I guess I wanted to throw this one to you because you're a designer. So what are some things you're just, you're taking into consideration just because obviously you want to be a profitable brand. Like what are some of the things to sort of make the fits appealing to a wider audience that you might be considering in the design process? So what we do, I mean, obviously the Avalichie dresses are all stretch. So that somewhat helps because what these dresses do in particular is they really underline your silhouette as I was talking about and we have sizing. But then it's just really bearing in mind that there are so many different kinds of girls out there. And yeah. there is not one dress that's gonna look good on all of you. That's yeah. just the way it is. Um, the, like, I think it's just important that in a collection to have a good selection of that girl who needs to cover or wants to cover her thighs or her knees, but that that dress still feels just as sexy or attractive as a mini dress does in, in a sketch. Like when I do my sketch, like a little mini dress uh, and long legs is always easy to draw, but like reality yeah. is that not everyone looks like that. So I yeah. think, you know, when I designed, especially for Hervé, I tried to have different length in a collection, whereas a lot of brands will be like, okay, it's mini only this season. I try to always have variety just because yeah. of the nature of the brand. Um, and then what we're doing now is we are adding lots of things that are not bandage dresses, which sort of makes it uh, more of an all round collection, like with the uh, day wear and we don't have sleep wear, but uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, like desk to dinner or whatever it's called. That's great. Well, we'll see where, where our desks are in the future. They may be, we may, we may be sitting at our desks of the future. Um, yeah. So I'd like to throw it out to the group. And are there any either brands, influencers, people kind of, you know, tastemakers who you feel are really perpetuating more of an inclusive voice? Like, are we seeing, is there anybody out there that you think is making a difference in terms of evolving this? idea of what we were supposed to look like and now I feel like we live in a different world and it's just like nobody has time we need to sort of celebrate the brands that are championing multiple types of bodies um, and shapes are there who's doing it well you know in your view I think Rihanna and the Savage by Fenty is definitely from a um from an undergarments perspective, uh, I mean, even her, her fashion show, I mean, that's what people, that's what everybody was talking about, how it was incredibly inclusive. I mean, there was even a woman who was, I think, had just, like, just w went into labor as she got off the runway a couple of years ago. Um, so that was really cool to see. I mean, a bit dangerous from a, you know, yeah. health standpoint in that regard, but, but that wow. was really cool to see. Um, and I feel like, you know, without, without naming names, there's definitely some lingerie brands out there who, who have never catered to women above a size, you know, 10 or 12. And, um, I think it's beautiful to see that women, that women can feel like they can wear these sexy pieces that are in their size, which, you know, just the fact that they're able to find them in their size. I mean, I'm a size 14. So, um, I can, I can attest to it personally and professionally uh, that just to find something really beautiful and really special in your size is a game changer. It is a game changer. Tiffany, can you talk a little bit about like from like, what do you think the retailers 
could be doing better? Because obviously retail is in dire straits at the moment. Oh my gosh. So, okay. yeah. It's my soapbox, to be honest with you, because I actually think it's um, like big box retailers specifically, I think it is, uh, they should be incredibly embarrassed. I mean, I went to, again, we'll not name names, but the, the main retailer we have here in um, Nashville, uh, and usually your uh, plus size or all inclu or size inclusive sizes are in like the basement yeah. and it's like, the most boring stuff you've ever seen like you know black stretch pants and like a cardigan it's nothing interesting whatsoever um so i i, I honestly think they can take a cue from e-retailers like 11 on array who have um really stepped forward and made um made women feel beautiful. I mean, I've, I've done several events with them here in Nashville and I'll never forget. Um, I was having a fitting with one of my clients who was just, I mean, she, she sold me my condo here in Nashville and she put this Christian Siriano dress on and she was like, Oh my gosh, I feel like I can go on a date again. Like it literally changes people's lives. It changes people's lives. I was going to bring up 11 on array. I think they're doing, um, so it's such a good point. They're doing such an amazing job with that. And I think, um, I think you actually had the creative director on one of the other panels for, for glam hive, but, um, somebody like, like a retailer like that also offers a, a young brand like ours, a huge opportunity because, you know, there are certain just logistics about production as a new and young brand and the financial capabilities that you're able to, to what your the size run you're able to do. And when a, when a company like 11 on array comes in and places an order, it allows you, you know, to create that, um, that you, the extended category that you want to create because the order's there for you, you know? Um, and, and that's, that's huge for us because that's something that I've, you know, wanted to do with Helena Quinn for a long time is, is just have a, a wider range of sizes. Um, and it's just challenging to be honest, as a, as a younger company, like a, to, to be able to financially do that without the support of an order from an outside retailer. So 11 on is, is helping in both, you know, they're helping from, you know, a, a a image perspective for women to to provide luxury items to a larger size range and they're helping brands like like mine to be able to to move into that space as well i think that's so interesting um that they're kind of enabling you to do that because they're committing to the units and because it's a digital platform, they have the real estate to allocate to showing everything in an equal exactly. way. Yeah. And I, as a former retailer, I think, yeah, the retailers need to reimagine their floor spaces because who's to say all this can't be merchandised, you know, all sizes should be merchandised together. Why do these departments feel so archaic um, and not relevant? So, I think it's really just, that's really interesting. And yeah, and retailers, if you are listening and you are thinking of new ways to reinvigorate your business, you heard it here, Glam, Fi Glam Hive. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, is there anything else we are kind of, you know, we have, we have uh, about seven more minutes. Um, anything you'd like to say as it relates that I haven't asked, I'm going to keep going through, but I just, well, any other... Um, yes, Christian. Well, I had a thought, which is uh, regarding the sizing. And I feel like my way of working is very much, I get inspired by girls and I try to listen to girls and hear what girls' needs are. And I constantly need to hear what number they are, if they're size four or size 14 or 12 and all this. And I'm like, there's so much focus on this number. And I wish girls would spend more time focusing on getting their clothes fitted. As a designer, and I've done this for years, you can't design a dress that'll fit all women. Like the nature, I can't remember who, but somebody just says, even the nature of the same woman from the first of the month to the 20th of the month, the body will change. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, so that's one woman, <laughs> you know, I think that's you, Andrea, but like, um, like the body will change. And ch see the difference between a size four, how different a size four is, 
plus how many girlfriends i don't think i have many friends apart from my sort of model friends everyone is like oh i'm a size this up here and a size this up here i think it's so important to have a good tailor and just be mm -hmm. The money that girls are spending on getting their nails done the same place, getting their hair done the same place. I think, I mean, maybe this needs to be post COVID, but like find yourself or maybe get your stylist to advise you a good tailor that can help you take your pants in a little bit on the waist. Like, or if you have a blouse that just makes you look boxy, it might look really cool boxy when the collection was designed, but maybe on you, you need to curve it in. And just have that tailor that knows your body and understands you and um, have them helping you just uh, fit your clothes. I, I personally, I actually get a lot of my things tailored, even though I don't have many weight issues, but a lot of my clothes is oversized. But a lot of the time, if I want a huge shirt, which I like, the sleeves come down to here. So I've several mm. times had my sleeves tailored. It's like, you know, $10, $15. It's not a big expense to do, but I just think finding a good tailor is important for um, the shape building. So true. I'm so, so happy, Christian, you brought up this entire conversation because it was something that I really wanted to get to, which is the size in the back of your pants, whether it's from Banana Republic or wherever it's from, is going to be a different size. A four does not equal a four across all brands, a 14, etc. So it's, I think, if mentally we can move past size, and focus more on fit. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna be better for it. And I think, you know, uh, we're lucky this panel, a group of panelists, you know, we know in fashion that like the tailor is our best friend. That's just like kind of what fashion people do. They always get everything altered. And, you know, for anybody listening here who may not know that, even if it's somebody, you know, the tailor at your dry cleaner, like become, you know, bring, and also another tip, always bring the shoes you're going to wear the outfit with to the tailor. Um, but yeah, it's life changing once you build that relationship. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, any other parting comments? Cause I, that was such a good one, such a good nugget that I forgot. I think that's the best piece of advice. And I also think it's the easiest way to refresh your closet. I think that, you know, you go in your closet and you're like, okay, I'm really over this long dress. You can cut it off or, if you have older clothes you can, and you're like, oh, I'm going to save this for when I lose weight. Like, fuck it. You don't need to wait until you lose weight. Like, go add a panel. You know what I mean? Like, you can still wear your favorite stuff and readjust it. Like, I think that's also a big, like, misconception is going into what you have. You can have an entire new wardrobe with bringing your tailor over to your house. I think also just uh, to that note, people don't think about it in terms of, like, make that a part of your budget make that a part of your buy less and then use the money to invest in the tailor have fewer pieces that fit well and make that you know just always incorporate that into your what you're going to spend and your and your budget and make it make it a part of it how how do you know when there's just too much in your closet and when is it time to just let go of a piece? I mean, it's like no longer serving you. Really is that again? Yeah. So good. Sorry. I'm sorry, Brooke. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no, I would love, yeah, please. I just feel like if it doesn't make you feel good, like you need to get rid of it. If there's, like I've been in my friend's closet sometimes, they're like, yeah, the tags are still on because I don't, you know, I, it doesn't fit me, but maybe it will. And I'm like, no, just get rid of it. Like, in my opinion, I just feel like if it, if you walk in your closet and you're looking at something and it makes you feel like shit, throw it out. And do this, I recommend, after you've had the night of sleep that Christian recommended, you don't want to do it on a day when you're like having an emotional day and then totally. decide to throw all your clothes into the river, I you know, know, try to, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I think personally, like, I have to say I'm on the other spectrum. Like, I keep everything. And it's like, it served me well because I'm also a stylist. So it's one of those things where, like, I have so much vintage stuff, but it's also like when I go through my personal closet to, you know, clean it out, I put a pile of the things that I'm like, okay, like I can part with this now, but I'm not sure if I'm going to feel differently in a week. So I'll literally put it in a suitcase and then I'll like set a reminder and I'll go back to it in a month. And I'll be like, if I didn't miss anything, if I didn't even think about it, that's smart. Then I don't need it because personally, I'm sure all of you are on the same boat. 
like shopping has been second nature literally since I knew what shopping was. Like, so it's one of those things that it's just something you do. And I pick up a shirt here and there pretty much every single day. So it's like getting stuff, like just, you got to clean it out. But I also think the things that like bring you joy, just keep. But if you, it, like Tiffany said, if they make you feel like shit, get rid of it. Cause you're never going to feel good in it. Or if you have a bad memory or something like just get rid of it. Yeah, if you have to create a whole narrative of justification yeah. around why it's there, even though you've never touched it, it's probably, uh, in my experience, not worth keeping. Um, I have loved this conversation. Any other parting thoughts on just how, how we as women can just come to accept ourselves? Any mantras or personal practices? that might inspire our audience and it's okay. Um, I have, I have some, I have a thought. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, one thing for me is, is catching the self-talk. So I think we often have a, a running dialogue in our head and it sort of speaks to like what I was talking about in the beginning about when you're waking up in the morning and sometimes that the talk is just, it just starts running and you don't even, you know, you don't even think about it. So I think like, catching that self-talk and, and asking yourself, like, wait a minute, is this true? Like, is even, is what I'm saying to myself even true about my body? Like, is it also, you know, would you ever sometimes speak the way so, with the thoughts that are going on in your head to your sister or your best friend, or sometimes we say really harsh things. And I think that has a huge impact on the way we get dressed. Um, and I think so if you can just like have some awareness of those thoughts and catch them and, and redirect you, it goes a long way into helping to love your shape. I love that. The narrative you tell yourself. Yeah. Trying to keep that positive. I have a wacky personal question that I'm just curious. Do you, do you all let, like, do you know the night before, do you lay your outfit out for the next day? I mean, this is also a pre-COVID question. Like if you knew what you had the next day or are you like an emotional person that needs to like feel it when you wake up? I mean, I'm just curious people's strategies for getting dressed and being prepared. I feel like the only time I really plan outfits is like when I'm going on a trip, like I'll like go out I'll go in my closet and I'll just have, I'll literally like schedule fitting with myself and I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna try on everything. But other than that, I think I just have to go with like what I'm feeling in the morning. I wish I laid out my outfits, but <laughs> don't. I, I feel like because we pick outfits for people for a living, it's like the last thing I want to do is have, you know, <laughs> go through that whole process with myself. This is similarly how like, ironically, I, I'm not a fan of shopping. Like I'd rather stick, stick pins in my eyes than go to a mall on the weekend. Um, you know, where my friends are like, yeah, do you want to go to the mall? I'm like, absolutely not. I wouldn't know. Thank you. Um, <laughs> totally understand. I mean, Kelly, one you little look advice. Oh, sorry. Oh, one I just thought people wanted to, I was oh, making sure I didn't cut people off. Oh, Brooke, I'm an emotional dresser for sure. Mm -hmm. I feel it really after in the mornings. I'm like, what am I feeling? I touch things. I I look around and some days it's really hard for me even. And then this is something, you know, they say basically something that you've struggled the most with in the past is something that you're meant to share. And, you know, it's part of my gift is styling women is because I've struggled in the past with wanting to have the perfect outfit for myself. And some mornings it's hard for me, you know, and I think a lot of women struggle with that. So it's how you feel. And I just put it together, but I'm able to do it in a way that I'm expressing myself. And I want I think to it's important. Out. Yeah, I think it's yeah. important for everybody listening to this, that even celebrity mm -hmm. stylists mm -hmm. at, who do this for a living sometimes don't know what to wear. Yeah. That sometimes is just like, human. That's, that's just being cool. a human. Yeah. I've um, seen things before this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, I feel like I cut you off. I, I, I feel like no, you were saying something. I just had a little advice, which I've given to uh, girlfriends in the past, is when you have a look that you felt good in, take a screenshot or take a picture, cut your face off. Because when we look at pictures of, of ourselves, we always look at our face, right? But if there's a look you felt good in, 
zoom in, cut your face off, screenshot it, and save it in a folder with looks. So if you wake up and you didn't oh. prepare your look the night before, you can always scroll <laughs> through these and be like, oh, that kind of works. I love um, that. Like more, and you're right. That is more, something we I more no, But more cut notes the face. <laughs> Sorry? I said more notes to take over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning a lot yeah. on this call. Well, I think we are officially out of time, but I just want to thank all of you so much for joining Glam Hive today. I think this was a really interesting discussion, both of the practical side of enhancing our shape, but also just the essence that we need to learn to love ourselves, be nice to ourselves, say nice things to ourselves, and surround ourselves with people that support a positive view of ourselves. I think that's definitely important. Um, so thank you so much. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys soon and doing this again. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.